How's it going, everybody? It's the old wolf, your friend Jesse Kula, coming at you from the Red Wolf Swordsmanship blog and Fortes of Fitness and Martial Arts and the Chicago Swordplay Guild. Um, as you can see, it is still empty here at the fort. And we are out there in the world trying really hard not to touch anyone. So, I want to spend tonight to talk about how to touch people in the most painful and inconvenient ways possible. Theory or theory. So let's talk a little bit about what they are. Uh, we'll use our trusty friend the post here to hit a few times, look at some biomechanics, and then we'll take a look at how to practice those biomechanics all by yourself at home without a punching bag. Yeah, might as well make our lives a little bit uh, less boring, vent some of our frustrations on some imaginary Foes while we're all locked up. <clears throat> so we all know uh, Fjord de Frulon has a number of Armizare, sorry, Abrazare, poste, embracing guards. Uh, I love that word, Abrazare. It just sounds so nice. So we have our initial guard positions, right? We have our iron gate, our uh, Porta de Ferrum. I like to have my toes, they're going to vary as we go. I generally like to start a little on the open side. Hands on either side of my thigh. My hands are lively. Like I was just looking at somebody and I say, simmer down, friend. In this nice, alive, calming position, head up, eyes up, talking to someone. Hand from the side, we're ready to go. Simmer down, friend. It's going to be okay. It will it, though. So, from there, we have Mr. Frontali. Hey, 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 calm down. So again, it's a lively, natural position. I'm just talking to you, somebody. What's going on here? I don't want to make this too <laughs> kung fu or martial artsy, because um, I'm going to hit this person. I don't really want to tell them first. So my upper body says, everything's cool. And my lower body says, rock and roll, we're going to fight. And we can shift back and forth between those attitudes as needed. But you want to be able to have both, and I recommend practicing the chill attitude of the face and body a little bit more, while keeping your lower body ready to rock at all times. Regardless, once the fight's on, you know, do what you gotta do. Uh, from there, we have Posta Longa. I prefer the dagger variant of Posta Longa. Uh, but that one's good too. Just fully extending the body. It's a place you're going to go to. It's an active part of the show. And Dente de Quinquiado, boom, rising up to strike from below. This hand is usually bringing something down or transporting something. Um, I have a very slight diagonal to my rise, which also is something I could hide behind if things aren't going my way. I consider that very important. So those are our four guards. And again, the hips are what matter the most here. On the low line, we need to be able to turn the hips inward. And we need to be able to turn the hips outward without losing our orientation on our original target. We also need to be able to make a mezza volta or a half or a half turn over the line. As you can see, I'm stepping right to you guys at the camera there. I'm not stepping straight to my forward direction but I'm stepping across, just a little bit, my own forward line. And sometimes we need two to volta, which is turning all the way around, but that's beyond the scope of today's video. Uh, we also want to be able to pressure in and press forward off that back leg without any weight shift. So if I'm hanging back, I have to shift my weight before I can go. And even though that's pretty quick, there's a slight delay and it creates a little whip up here on the high line. I don't want to do that. Even though I'm here in front of ready to go, boom. I want to advance my whole self and bring that leg with most of the time. I don't want to leave it behind. So we can practice a little drill where we're just like one, two, shift, back. One, two, shift, back. And here I'm getting ready to refuse myself. So I am adjusting my feet on that second step to be. Um, back weighted, especially if I have to receive somebody and I'm running away. Whoa, no, oh, running away. You can lean in or receive the high line and work. 
So don't get too fussy about it. Just make sure you're always picking a heavy and a light leg. You're not 50-50ing out. Uh, we don't teach that here at our school. We think it's good to have one leg lighter than the other at all times. So, from there, hitting people. Fury doesn't give us a lot. It just says, hit people in ways that hurt. Doesn't give us a lot of specific, he gives us some targeting. He says, you know, hit him here in the bottom of the face, hit him in the throat, hit him in the flanks, which I consider to be the floating rib and the kidney area. Um, he stays off the center line for the body, it seems like to me. Uh, that's neither here nor there. Some contemporary sources to Fury um, do have deliberate labeled center line strikes to the body. That's fine if you want to throw them. Uh, I'm just not going to talk about them right now. So, um, from our frontale, I like to extend the lead hand with a, either just a weight shift or a weight shift and a crest ray if you want to bridge some distance. Boom. Splitters. And making sure you end up with a nice straight leg, a nice relatively straight arm, and a good solid transfer. You should be able, if you're using a post like this, you should be able to brace. I got some padding on this one, by the way, so I'm hitting it a little bit. So I want that boom, boom, boom. I'm just opening my hand. In front of you all, have my weight here, a little bit, nice and split apart, and I'm just reaching forward, boom, shifting my weight, putting this pie, this miniature pie of my hand, right on their face, like I'm some kind of evil clown. Just face, pie face. And then I'm going to follow up right away. So if I hit this, I'm either going to come off it like it's a hot stove, whoa, hey man, are you cool? How do you know this? Um, or I'm going to hit them again. One, two. Notice I brought that one, and I brought this with me as I pie fit. I brought that leg with me as I hit that second time. And then back to my frontale if I need it. Again, this is not a boxing art, so we're going to do other things after we hit people. We're not just going to hit them and look at our handiwork and admire it. But for the sake of learning biomechanics, we can do a little bit of that for now. We'll assume we're all white belts, or were at one point. So we have our one, two. Bring this forward to shorten the space. Long space, short space. This hits like a, the second one. The rear hand can hit like a freight train if it needs to. Another popular, popular strike that we need to teach here is the hammer fist, this descending blow. We see this guard that Fiori has with the hand up in the dagger section. To me, this is just combat longa. And my heel's already up. I'm trying, there we go. The mirror says you can see my heel. And we have this position, and we can turn and hatchet it just like it's a little short sword. And this is a great thing, especially if we're already taking a grip of somebody. I don't like bridging measure with this blow. It's short, it's a little bit, it doesn't lead with very much. So it's not a very safe blow to throw from a wide measure of hand to hand combat. But let's say I threw that front hand and grabbed onto the garment and I pull that human towards me, well then it makes total sense. We've already broken measure. Don't need to worry about the lines as much, don't need to worry about timing as much, and we can focus more on raw kinetic energy transfer. Hitting them hard AF. Smashing them good. Remember, free should hurt, right? It's not friendly. Everything is hitting people all the time. Uh, to me, in Abra Zara, even grabbing people should be done ballistically and aggressively and make them regret being touched by me. After all, Fiori says, we're defending our lives and not doing much else. Lota is for friendly. Abra Zara and Ferire are for, well, very bad things. So the hammer fist again to face you guys. Come out, grab a hold of something, pretend you've got their hair, the collar of their shirt, cupping the back of their head lovingly, and then, bump, turn that hip into it, drop that body down a little bit, and cut that hand like you're driving nails right into the board. I'm not too worried about how I lean. I am turning my body. 
and putting my entire kinetic self on there. I might even push off that rear foot a little bit and whoop, hammer in real good. And this is where we come to our practice. So once you have that biomechanic down of shift your weight forward into that front hip, bring your rear forward with that and bring your foot into that rear straight smash. And by the way, if you want to use your fists, go ahead. The old man never tells us not to. Um, I just personally think this is a very safe way to hit, especially if you don't train fists all the time. And it lets you grab onto people, which is my whole mission, is to hurt them, attach to them, and hurt them more. So, um, work on that biomechanic. Turn your body, turn your body, turn and then turn again and let that slide forward. And hey, we're just back in frontale. We're just back in frontale. Turn and step, turn and step. Hey, we're in frontale. Grab. I'm going to cut my hand behind their head. Turn and hit. Grab. Turn and hit. Grab. Turn and hit. Following through. If you have a hip pad or a focus mitt, that makes us hurt a lot less, by the way. But you can do this nice and slow and just work the biomechanics meditatively by going ah, iron gate, frontale, smashy face, smashy face, oh, there you go, grab, I like to shift my weight back as I adhere to them, shift my weight back as I adhere to them, and smash. Oh, that doesn't hurt my own hand. Smash. Practice that biomechanics. Make sure that lat is tight as you pull through. You can even meet yourself and pull that lat tight and grind in with that leg to really get the feel and really train your muscles to fire. Slow work has benefits. It really does.